829 and the hearings in Washington continue and our in-depth coverage continues of the NTSB talking about the cause of the accident at SFO that ended up killing three people with Asiana Airlines crashing that plane. And uh, we'll keep checking in live in Washington as that hearing's uh, underway and uh, Mike McCarran, aviation expert, joining us now. And uh, they went through several points as far as where the errors happened, but it seems like it was uh, several errors in a row from the pilots that led to, to this crash. Right, and, and that's not a common incident like this. You'll see a, a series of events, all these little links in a chain kind of, uh, so to speak, that lead to this event. Um, but the, once again, the overriding thing is that the pilot command was not watching airspeed and altitude. The pilot monitoring him on his check ride was not monitoring pilot uh, airspeed and altitude, and they, they stalled the aircraft and, and landed short. The uh, NTSB has uh, presented this animation of what the pilots see and what and then what they're supposed to do and what what are they supposed to do in this case for example before the crash happened this would have been the cockpit right they're looking at all the instrumentation uh, based upon the flight data recorder um, that spits out all this detailed information of where the par levers are what the attitude is what the altitude is and uh, they just can recreate this whole animation so you can see he's basically on a standard approach there uh, looks like he's approaching the San Mateo bridge from that I can't it looks like Foster City on the left side of the wingtip there okay and um, they, watch the knots right and you can watch the air speed right. and uh, the altitude as they come in and this is how they recreate the whole crash the, the computer generation is wonderful um, so this is if you're in a plane behind uh, the aircraft coming in. So the um, throttle's set to idle at this point, right, and no one noted, right? And there's that, no notice that the airspeed was dropping. Right, and so uh, if I remember correctly from the initial report, they said that at one point they were above glide slopes, so they wanted to lose some altitude, so they were slowing the aircraft down to lose some altitude, but then they didn't reset the, the throttles to maintain that altitude, and they just kept drifting below a glide slope and eventually stalled out the aircraft. And there's a lot of discussion here during this hearing that, you know, while the pilot error is to blame, that there's a, a seems to be a lack of proper training for all pilots as to what exactly stays automated and what doesn't as you go through your procedure and steps for landing. Right, there's some confusion on that, but once again, there, there should be talking among the three pilots in the cockpit as far as cross-checking, altitude, airspeed, heading, all these things going on, and at no point during the, from the recording, from the transcript, from the cockpit voice recorder, do you hear that going on until it's far too late to make any type of corrective action. So I guess you want to say, well, what are we going to learn from this? What are they going to change? I mean, all of these shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and we want to move forward without this happening again. Right, they're going to have to re-examine the proced internal procedures of this airline as far as how they train, how they do what's called crew resource management, as far as making sure everyone's aware of the situation around them when they're in the cockpit and make sure they're not afraid to challenge someone of authority saying, I don't think that's the right altitude, I don't think that's the right heading, wherever the case may be. Um, you know, the airspeed still, uh, what, it was I about 137, 137 right? which is about it's the approach speed. speed. Um, that's where they should be because they were down to less than just above 100 knots when Oof. they impacted. So that's incredibly slow for an aircraft that size. Yeah. Um, and so now you can see the airspeed still dropping and the altitude's dropping. Now they're at 500 feet, and this is the critical point where they have to be stabilized, and they're not stabilized at all. And according to Asiana's procedures, they're supposed to do ex ex uh, execute a go around, apply th power, clean up the aircraft, and go, you know, climb up out of there. But they continue downward, and you know they just keep losing altitude and airspeed. Because right there they have like how, how a minute? What, how, what are we talking time-wise uh, oh, to probably, do something? Probably yeah, less than a minute right now because you're you're 100 and some odd, uh, about 120 feet above the water right there. Which is that time to do something? Watch right. the stick. Watch yeah. this. He's pulling back on the stick now, right, to try right, and gain which is altitude. Now, he's trying to gain altitude, but what they'll do is slow the aircraft down even further because you bleed off the airspeed. It's counterintuitive, but you actually want to push the nose over to gain speed because it puts more lift underneath the wings, but they're too low to even Well, do that's that. another point, that he's doing the wrong thing. Well, it's just you, you're trying to avoid everything you can, right. but he's so low right now that even putting the nose down, he would have, wouldn't have been able to save the aircraft. I see. All right, thank you, Mike. A lot of interesting things coming out of this hearing this morning. Yeah, we're going to keep monitoring it and, uh, and, and keep getting uh, kind of it broken down into regular terms that we can understand from <laughs> our expert this morning. Thank you for being sure. here.